Chris and Chris Talk Movies. Hello and welcome back to the podcast. My name is Chris Ferry and of course this is my co-host. My name is Chris Huddleston. And today we're both very excited to be talking to you about a real humdinger of a film entitled Eve of Destruction. Dr. Eve Simmons has created a robot in her image. This is Eve 8, also known as Eve Vickers. State of the art. For all intents and purposes, she is a human. How do I look? She was programmed with much of my life experience, but we are not exactly alike. I knew we were doing some robot research, but this thing... She's a brilliant machine who's learning to be all woman. I'd kill to have that jacket. And now, she's on the loose. Well, this is quite some toy you have yourselves here, gentlemen. I suppose you want me to put it back in its box. It's not a toy, Colonel. She's poised. I'm very sensitive. Charming. A tease. Why don't we just go take a room? With a temper. I'll call you sometime, okay? And she's having a bad day. Come on, get out of the way! I'm very sensitive. She's activated. What do you mean she's activated? She's a state-of-the-art thermonuclear warhead. A walking nuclear bomb. And once you turn her on, you'll never turn her off. If we don't find her in the next 24 hours, she'll explode with enough force to take out 20 to 30 city blocks. The target is still at large. Gregory Hines, E of destruction not just another pretty face please don't say this i'm very sensitive do you have a synopsis for us mr huddleston i do and uh this is a 1999 film directed by duncan Gibbon, gibbons wait famous... wait a minute it was a 99 film no, I, did i say 99 Nine, 91. 91 yeah 91. it feels it feels actually like it should be 80s. earlier than that. Yeah. It feels like an eighties movie to me, but feels like about like eighty five or eighty seven. Ninety one. Like anyway. Ninety one, directed by everyone's favorite director, Duncan Gibbons. And it stars uh <laughs> it stars Gre- Gregory Hines and I we were speaking off mic. I do not want to the the um uh, Eve in the film was born in the Netherlands and I haven't figured out how to pronounce her name. Uh, Renee Sutton, Sutton Dick, I'm going to say, okay. um, if anyone, uh, knows the correct pronunciation and wants to correct us, I would love to, uh, love to hear that. Um, so the synopsis from IMDB, a terrorist hunter is hired by a scientist who to deactivate her Android double, a walking, talking, murderous nuclear bomb, which has gone amok in this big city and is about to explode two big cities. It's in San Francisco and in New York. So, all right. So this was a first time watch for both of us. I had this wasn't like this movie was completely unknown to me. I had heard of it before, but that's about it. Um, so, and you were the same, you had not seen it. So what you, you go first, very dangerous. Uh, very asps. You go first. I did that all out of order. So what did I think of Eve of Destruction? It's terrible in delicious ways. <laughs> it is really – there was some stuff. This is one of those ones as we're watching. Um, you and I are texting each other back and forth quotes for the movie, right? Uh, just some absolute gems in this one. There's a – this it requires more unpacking, but one text you sent me was – a line of uh, Professor Eves, not Robot Eves, where it says they're talking about this kind of local honky tonk place, and she's like, "Oh, I know that place. It's the local hooker joint." <laughs> <laughs> Which I thought about that, like maybe I'm hanging out at the wrong places, or maybe not the wrong places, or whatever, but. Do you know like which bars in your town well, the that's hookers hang out in? Pull up, excuse me, roll down your window. Excuse me, hey, where, where's the local hooker joint? <laughs> 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 anyway, it's uh, the writing is uh, 
It's really, really funny. Uh, I think to zoom back out and take the movie as an overview, it's really it's the Terminator. Uh, this is a little politically uh, incorrect or insensitive. It's like the Terminator on PMS is what it is because it's this mm. sort of very 80s idea of like, hey, guys, ladies have jobs too. Ladies can be scientists and ladies can be killer robots. Mm. And it has that. It, the robot keeps saying things like, I'm very sensitive. <laughs> She's Although that, literally that got said, a nuclear bomb in her. So it's like, oh, don't piss her off too much because she'll explode. It'll. It's just, it's crazy. That being said, the doctor, so I, uh, I don't know if it explained in the synopsis or not, but so Eve is this doc. There's a lot of really on the nose stuff with, you know, it's the Eve of destruction. It's like, it could be the end of the Get world, it. but also right. it's Eve of destruction. She's a robot, you know? And, yeah. And yeah. you see what we did there with the title and the names <laughs> and, and Eve is the, is the first robot, you know? So it just happens that this doctor who creates the robot, her name is actually Eve. And, I would say with the film, they're never, uh, and that's all these generals and all this stuff, and they're never disrespectful to her or anything. Like, no, there's no aren't. cracks about, I thought, it, a doctor, I thought you'd be a man or whatever. Exactly. But, None but, of that. Uh, so, yeah, so that was uh, not that this movie is is politically correct, but no, at, at least in that, because there was a scene where, she goes in and and meets Gregory Hines, and I was certain that Gregory Hines kind of is sarcastic and wisecracky and stuff. And I was certain he was going to make some comment, and he didn't. But right. So anyway, go ahead. I think I mean I, I think Gregory Hines is the wrong casting for this. I um, thought so too. I thought wildly, like he wildly was wildly wrong for this. Yeah, he he was the weakest link of this. I th I felt like when. When he was on screen, and not that I dislike Gregory Hines, although I, I don't know that I've ever. I mean, I, you know, he was a star when we were kids, but the only thing that I that I think I maybe ever really watched with Gregory Hines was Running Scared. That's that's the that's the one with uh, with Billy Crystal, right? Where they're like cops or something like Buddy. I don't cops. remember. Did you ever see White Nights with Barishnikov? Yeah, that's yeah. Gregory Hines too. I, I think, vaguely right? remember that one. That was but, a good movie. Yeah, if I remember but, correctly. But yeah, I I thought it, I was just like he just and it was basically like again, not that I have anything against him, but when he was on screen, I was just like I want to go back to Eve. I I yeah. don't really care about him. And that's not to say that she was great. Um she plays both parts, right? So she at least gets the fun of getting to be the robot and the concerned doctor. But you know, mm -hmm. This type of a script is very formulaic, and yeah. there's supposed to be some sizzle between the two leads, right? The doctor is supposed to be the reluctant, you know, intellectual, aloof, and he's supposed to be the hard-boiled, you know, couldn't care less, just trying to get the job done, and they're supposed to have chemistry very mm -hmm. clearly, and in most movies— um, you know, that would be like a Bruce Willis and, uh, it'd be like romancing the stone or you know, we've mm -hmm. seen it a million times. Um, there's no chemistry between these two whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Um, and something really interesting occurred to me. 91, we were in high school or just graduating from high school. Um, <laughs> there's a scene in this honky tonk bar where the robot goes in there in a red leather jacket and, it's like she's trying to pick up these guys because it turns out that somehow she's actually one of the science fiction things that I think is actually kind of cool about this is she's sort of a flesh and bone robot. Like there's mechanics in there, but she's more like a replicant. Like she's actually got blood and tissue and organic basis that are kind of cloned off of this doctor. And so the, the premise is that the robot is messed up and is starting to kind of psychologically be triggered by stuff that is actually memories and thoughts and feelings and history of the actual doctor on whom she's based. So she goes into this honky tonk and there's these three guys that are supposed to be these sort of menacing, you know, roughneck dudes 
one of whom gets up to go and hit on her. And the thought I had, I just thought, I I bet, and not that it matters, but I, I thought, I, I bet all three of those actors are gay, <laughs> right? They're supposed to be these tough, you know, you know, like real, like just got done putting an engine back together. And it was like, oh, let's go rough up a local woman at the lo- <laughs> at the local hooker joint. And uh, and I just thought, wow! I mean, I and I wouldn't have seen it in '91, but now I'm just like, I don't know, just cast three pretty, obviously gay guys. As far as I mean, if you're asking me, I don't know. And I just I had a big I laugh at ex- it because of that. I thought exactly the same thing. Exactly uh, the same thing. At least the guy that she actually goes into the bedroom with, yeah, or the I hotel mean, room or whatever. It, I was like, it tells I think the that story. Guy's gay. Well, I mean, and he does the thing. It's not just anyway. Let me unpack this a little bit. So they they're all they're like, "Hey, check her out," and they're all kind of leer at each other. And then one of them kind of slowly gets up, like he's going to go make his move, and uh, he, he stands up and and goes to talk to her. And she says, "Why don't we just take a room?" And she turns and walks away. And then he looks back over at the other guys who have been listening from the booth, and he does this little thing that's not a fist pump, but it's a sort of a like. Guys, can you believe my luck? I mean, there's this guy. And they're all like, yeah, you go get him. And then they're standing outside the door listening, like a couple of seventh graders. Like, <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's just the corniest thing. Ah, I mean, in, this movie didn't mean to be as fun as I think it ended up being. I wish we'd have watched it together and, yeah, and yeah. even I done like a thing. drunk cast on this one because I think there's a lot of MST3K kind of stuff that you could do yeah. along the way and how from its bad dialogue to the sort of silly setups to, you know, the the military guys are always saying some really ridiculously on the nose, right? All the characters, the general is this big guy who's completely out of touch and then there's sort of a CIA dude who's literally made of grease. Like there's just, he's just the most- That guy was armiest. always slimy yes. in yes. movies. Uh while you're talking, I'm going to check out what his name is because he was just one of those character actors. Kurt Fuller, yep. is his name. Who's just always a slimy. Oh, he had slimy, a big slimy career. Guy. I mean, he had a great career. Oh, yeah. that guy, he, he was two hundred and nine. Yeah, he's still working. Yeah, he has two hundred. He he's on Good a show him. called. He's on a sh- he's on the new Night Court show. Uh, he has two hundred nine acting credits. Listeners, you would one hundred percent recognize him. If oh you yeah, don't recognize the name, you'd be like, oh yeah, that guy. Yeah. Even yeah. I mean younger listeners, he's on the show Evil that has twenty nine he's on twenty nine episodes of that. Uh he's on Grace and Frankie on Netflix. So yeah. But um yeah, uh we talk sorry, I don't know I don't know if I interrupted your No, no, topic, I've been talking We a talk time. a lot. We talk a lot on this show, and we talked about this a couple of weeks ago when we did Galaxina about the so bad it's good movie and a lot of these you see the trailer you see the poster and you think that's gonna be crazy and fun and then it's just boring you know and the great thing about this movie is and this is is certainly not in the category of a galaxy and this is a much better man yes. this is a studio film yes you know and is is competently made in terms of, you know, there's not boom mics showing up, you know, and stuff like that. Um, but this is a so bad it's good and it's fun. It is and, fun. And, and when this movie is at its best, I would say, I think in the final act, it kind of fizzles a little bit. And yeah. what happens is, so like you said, the so they explain it at some point in the movie, that because early on, I was like, so the the robot is going into bars and picking people up and this right. was robot do that. And they, but they explain that she's more, she's more, uh, flesh than, than, uh, or more human, more human than human, more human than robot. And so, uh, she has all of her memories and all of her emotions and everything. And she explains at one point that the local hooker bar that she would drive past there, but she had this fantasy of going in there and I guess of, you know, pretending to be one of the hookers or whatever. So Eve does that. And so then at the end of the film, her, she and her husband are divorced 
and he has uh, their young son in New York, which they like trade weekends or whatever. She's in San Francisco. He's in New York, I think. Um, and so the robot, you know, and she says to Gregory Hines, well, the robot's going to go, you know, to get the son. And I, th- that it was still fine. I thought that was less interesting than just this movie for me could have been almost plotless and just her going around just killing people. Cause like there's a guy who she's going through like one of the canyons in, in LA or San Francisco, wherever it is. And, uh, this guy is, uh, there's a lot of pretty bad men in this movie, but this guy in a BMW, you know, on her bumper and oh, yeah. trying to get around her and everything. And she runs the guy off the road. And then did she blow up his car? Is that what she finally does at the end? She waits. What, uh... She waits until he, yeah, she, she waits. runs him off the road and he doesn't die mm-hmm. or explode. And he sort of, you know, spins out a little bit and manages to wrestle his car back up out of the, side and onto the road and then she broad she waits and then she broadsides him just basically yeah. plows her car right into the you know driver's side of his car and he, there's a great shot of the camera rushing toward him and him going ah <laughs> oh that's right that's right yeah she, yeah she crashed yeah and that's what sets off the the nuclear the, that's what activates yeah. her nuclear thing but like and the, they have uh, little pagers that go like beep 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 and like oh she's activated she's active. gregory hands like what's that <laughs> yeah. what what is that what's happening and they're like well they told me not to tell you <laughs> it's really it's like seventh grade and early on, a guy comes in and he says to her, they're like, they're having trouble with one, some version of a robot. And so this is the opening scene. He comes in and is like, need I remind you that our budget, you know, review is up in two weeks or something like that. Um, nope. I guess you needed to remind us that that was happening. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But that scene with, when you talked about with the, uh, the, the three sleazy guys in the bar. So she, um, <laughs> <laughs> and you don't you don't see this you just see but she uh you know he unzips and whips it out and she bites it off and so but then we, the we two... have to describe the scene when you're fin- okay, finished okay. saying it then we'll describe the scene okay so uh he she you know uh demembers him and uh so he's screaming and then so the you know the buddies are outside so they bust in and uh she uh the one buddy comes in and she she grabs him and throws him through the door and out the you know he hits the other side and of course the the other friend does what people always do in movies he pulls out his knife to, you know after you've just seen your friend get picked up by a woman and thrown through a door then he goes at her you know instead of just running away now the other guy runs away after he gets up but then she breaks his arm or rips his arm off or something. And yeah. you know, that's another great scene. And then she goes out, all these cops show up and she just, you know, blows all the cops away and then just blows up their car. And I don't know. So there's just a lot of fun. She you know, finds it's not... an Uzi somewhere. Yeah. Right. So, so this was, this was the age of the Uzi where mm-hmm. she's spraying. Yeah. You don't see but... Uzis in movies anymore. Mm, really. No, but for, they were the hot weapon of choice for a while there. Mm-hmm. Um, uh yeah I, I I just the shots in that so there's there's many of them leading up to this but he says something to the effect of um now it's time for the big or now for the big surprise or something before he pulls his dick out basically mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it's and he's like he's like oh come on come on you know don't uh, don't be a frigid or a prude or whatever like that. And the shot is from behind him. Like, so imagine him standing with his legs spread. His pants are still on. He's apparently got his fly down and his member out. He wants her to fillet him. And we are seeing her from, you know, we basically see his legs and, and butt framing the scene. And mm-hmm. she leans forward, opening her mouth until mm-hmm. his, you know, body blocks her face. And then mm-hmm. you hear a <laughs> <laughs> like a classic <laughs> pickle <laughs> ad. <Yeah. laughs> and he screams, which is what brings the other guys in. And then there is a shot that I thought was inspired, but I think they balked on, which is. 
there's a reaction shot of her like a cat having caught a mouse or something in its mouth as these guys come busting in the room. And if it was my movie, I would have had blood all over her chin and she would have spit out his dick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We didn't see that. We And I thought that was a in, – in this movie, I thought that was a wasted moment. I don't know who was like, well, we can't show that. This, this movie is almost bloodless too, d- despite I know. All, the, all the violence. There's like no it's, real gore. It's rated R, right? It's not. Yeah, it's I mean there there's a lot of f words, and she's naked. Some, you know. So there's you know there's some so other. So I mean, things you're to already be. at R. I don't know why you can't yeah. go ahead and commit to this being more of a fun R movie, a little more. You know, it's this is that era where it's like a lot of prosthetic makeup. They have mm-hmm. like peeling back skin on the robots and right and you know there's a lot of great like 64 bit animation on their screens where they have mm. like graphs of the robot and so it's like this little it looks like super mario brothers you know pixelation mm-hmm. of her but maybe it's 32 bit but you know but she's naked and i thought that was gratuitous <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's like this little, you know, you know, doll that you would dress in some of these adult online games or something. I just thought <laughs> it's a long shot too, as they're all kind of staring at the screen, like, "Well, where's the bomb?" It's oh, it's right yeah. there. <laughs> oh, this movie. Oh. Now, I mean, I do think this one's so bad it's good. I don't think it rises to unicorn. Like, no, I'm, I clearly had fun. We're there. having fun talking about it. But it does drag a little bit right near the end, and that's a bummer because it starts to take itself, like, I think a little too seriously. Yeah. And and it just starts to feel a little bit um, a little bit leaden. Because we I think don't the care. Unicorny, I think the unicorny kind of films have more, even though there's some pretty funny dialogue in this, there's not, and the, the you know, the the scenes of her killing these people are funny, yeah. but they're not in the way where it's like <sighs> unintentionally funny. You know what I mean? Right. Um, uh, it was just, I don't know. It was just fun to see. I just enjoyed seeing this, this robot just dispatching of all these different people, you know? Well, like when she broke, when she broke the guy's arm with the knife, mm. I thought I was like, Oh, like they're all oh, nice. I mean, it looks yeah fake but it looks good in this yeah. movie you're like oh that i bet they all were like high-fiving after that well it's great sure. you know i don't know how they did the arm break yeah but, i was thinking the same i was like I don't you know, know he pulls a knife way. out and it's not quite a crocodile dundee knife but it's, it's pretty a close it's a rainbowish one yeah, <laughs> yeah. Know, you're like you carry like a hunting knife around in your jeans yeah no sheath <laughs> he just pulls it out of his pocket like, yeah okay I guess people do that. <laughs> he just has cuts all over his leg where right, he's constantly right. stabbing himself by well, accident you know, when he sits it's down. A local hooker joint. You got to be um, prepared. You got to be ready. You got to be armed. And, uh, you know, honestly, I thought she was pretty good. I had not, I looked up her filmography and I guess she had worked in, uh, she was in, I guess, like one or maybe more early Verhoeven movies, like before oh. he was working in the U S so, um, and I mean, she had a career, but, uh, and you know, obviously there, there's a, her English is good. There's a couple of times where the accent kind of comes through, yeah. but, but overall, you know, she, she does a good job with a, a cause she's, uh, she's just supposed to be American. Although they sort of explain it away by, they moved to Europe at some point, you know, when she was young or whatever, but, but I thought she did a good job of, of, you know, playing the, um, you know, the sort of meek doctor and then also the sexy robot, you know, but early on again, I was still, conf- you know, then they explain it and it, it's still silly and dumb, but it makes sense. But like early on, you know, the, the robot immediately goes into this clothing store to buy like leather, you know, which is what she wear this like red leather jacket and red leather mini skirt. And it's just like, why does a robot want, but then, you know, they they explain it by she's fulfilling you know, the fantasies that the real Eve couldn't do, you know, which, which is kind of an interesting, you know, concept, but also it's an easy way for them to just have her be sexy instead of, uh, meek, you know, I, um, I was thinking as you were saying that I was thinking, you know, why don't we see, why don't we see the, 
fembot, the female robot thing, done interestingly, intelligently. But then I, I thought, then I was like, well, it has been. I mean, I think Ex Machina is a great example. Sure. Of a really interesting movie where you've got the sort of female robot that was clearly designed as a sex object. Mm-hmm. But is a much more interesting character than like the the non human characters in Ex Machina. I think are more interesting than the human characters. Yeah. Um, so I mean, it can be it can be done. I think part of the laughs in this is this sort of. It really does sort of feel like a fourteen year old wrote it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, the dialogue is not great. No. And uh, the performances are pretty stiff. Is very I don't on the know. nose. Um, I was going to look up the director because I'm not familiar with him, but I don't know that you would say this is done well or not. But did you see the last uh, Terminator? You know that has a has, that has a female term. I mean, I guess they've done a female Terminator a couple of times, but um, that had a female ter- Terminator. And uh, the last you know, one. Oh, yeah, but she's like a hybrid kind of thing, right? Mm Mm-hmm. I did see that, but I think that franchise has been... It was not bad. It was certainly not as bad as the Christian Bale one. Um, Oh, yeah, that one was real bad. But I think the problem with that franchise is she's kind of repeating itself, you know? This director mostly did uh, music videos, and there's just a couple of couple of movies and his last credit he did a tv movie in 1993 there is a look so. and feel just to the visual texture of this movie that really um chimed my nostalgia like i was like i yeah. loved the visual world it took me right back and i think it even that's why i think part of it felt like it was like an 86 or 87 movie it it felt like it felt like those movies like film film and the way the lights were set yeah, yeah. and the, the quality of that and i just it was so pleasurable to look at and i think there were some neat shots in it um but it's that's a little bit like having a cool car that looks really neat and then the totally inept drivers in it um mm mm-hmm. But you know, some of the movies that we watch just look terrible, and you're kind of like, it's it's not even fun if it looks and sounds bad, and if everything else is bad. There, you had said this is a well made movie, and I agree with it. If if that's what you meant, like the actual technical aspects of yeah, yeah, that's what I meant. Of not that shooting it's and well recording or... the film is that it's clearly done. It's a studio thing. It's professionally made by union people who know what they're doing. It's just whoever wrote it. And greenlit that script and then directed it was like didn't fix any of those problems right and um and this is one that i think you know for people who i mean i don't really buy physical media anymore but you know there's been a sort of like with vinyl there's several um kind of smaller dvd or blu-ray labels that will buy up these kind of you know, genre movies like this and do uh, like, for example, uh, one that I was just reading about the other day. Did you ever see this would actually be kind of a fun one to do on the show, but did you ever see the movie uh, trick or treat from uh, it's like 1985 or 86 or something like that. And it has the, the guy, I don't know if you remember this actor or not, but he was Skippy on family ties. Do you remember Skippy? Uh but basically, it's this kid that is obsessed with heavy metal, and he there's a uh, rock star that he's obsessed that like went to his high school, and the guy dies, and he somehow gets a record or something, uh, and resurrects it, and it has uh, Gene Simmons is in it as a uh, a DJ, and is actually I mean he's only in it for a couple of minutes, but is actually really good in the in the movie, and Ozzy Osbourne plays a preacher. Um, but anyway, it was one of these that was out of print and like, you couldn't find it streaming anywhere. And I had never seen it and watched it eh, maybe in like in the last year or so on YouTube. So it was like a, a poor quality print. But so one of these smaller studios, uh, I just saw a thing on Instagram the other day, 
bought it and they're doing like a 4k you know restoration and all these interviews and all this kind of you know to this small movie that like a lot of people don't know Hmm. but this would be the type because uh the print on this at least on what i watched it was it was okay but it just really looked like it could be cleaned up a lot you know and to me this is you know who knows what the rights issues are but this was seemed to me like one that there's one of those smaller uh kind of I don't know if prestige is the right term, but uh, these, you know, Blu-ray labels could buy up and, and, you know, clean it up and do a special edition on. Cause it's, I mean, it's a fun movie to watch and I'm sure it has its fans, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's cool that there are companies that do that too. Yeah. Um, a lot of these films do have a nostalgia factor to them. I mean, obviously you and I like to be able to see them. Yeah. Well, and it's sad, you know, and this is something we could, uh, I mean, and he's done documentaries about it, but Tom, um, you know, if there's, we need to have him back on the show again sometime if there's something that he wants to do, but, you know, he talks about it in his documentaries and has talked about it elsewhere where there's a lot of these movies that, uh, you know, with every new, and I don't know what the next thing will be, but with every new format, a bunch of these movies, they don't make it to the next thing, you know, and then they're just, now this one, you know, is on streaming and easy to find, but some of the other things that we've tried to watch that, you know, were somewhat well-known movies, you can't find anywhere. Right. Um, Right. So. He's making another one. Uh, Oh, yeah? Yeah, I think he's going to make VHS Massacre 3. Oh, cool. But we should, we should have him on Mm -hmm. to talk about it. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Um, so I don't know anything else on this one. Were there any other scenes no. that you loved? Or? I mean, no, that's a, it doesn't run yeah. that deep. You know what I mean? I, I did enjoy watching this one. I think it, I, I would recommend it. I think if you're into this kind of stuff and you're, you're looking for something fun and popcorny that you can sort of slap your thigh and laugh about, um, and it's a nostalgia trip, and it's the genres, the sort of action, I guess horror, but it's not really. It's a, I think it thinks it's supposed to be more thrilling and scaring than it, than it achieves. Yeah, but. it's a Terminator ripoff, you know. Yeah, but, um, you know, I I really, I had fun. Yeah, yeah, this is a, a, this is a great one to watch with friends, you know, just with some drinks or whatever, and uh, it's... It's even though I said it sort of fizzles a little bit towards. I mean, the very end is fun, but it, like you said, it gets a little more. It loses the the silliness to a degree and tries to be more serious um, towards the end. But it's but it's fun throughout. It's an hour and forty minutes. Um, yeah, I I thought it was great fun, you know. And it's only like a again, it's. Uh, not a you know a quote unquote good film, but it's only a so it's a four you know I guess that's kind of fair. It's a four point nine on IMDb. Compare that to the Boondock Saints, which is the last movie that we did, which was a is a seven point seven on IMDb, and this movie is a million times enter- more entertaining. I mean, I guess it's just you know what your taste is different strokes or whatever, but, sure. but this is a movie I might watch again sometime, you know, I would definitely recommend it to people that I know, like kind of cheesy sci-fi horror yeah. stuff. I mean, yeah. I've, I've, I've definitely told people, Hey, this, if you've never seen this before, watch it. It's, it's a lot of fun. Oh uh, Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, you, it's a little bit of an apple to an orange, but I agree with you. I enjoyed this one more than I enjoyed yeah, They're Boondock very different genres, you know, this compared yeah. to Boondock Saints. But, I mean, like we said, Boondock Saints, I have no interest in watching again, but I would I would watch this again. You know? Yeah, it might and be fun to do a second viewing of this. I would definitely want to drink or smoke or something. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Again, it's not, it's not great, uh, but it was no. fun. Yes, this is not... You know, if you think this is going to be a female Terminator and it's the quality of the Terminator, no, it's not that. But, but it is a fun, silly sci fi movie, which, you know, at this point in my life, I mean, it's always 
<laughs> I've always been at that point in my life. But <laughs> definitely now at this point in my life, you know, this is kind of stuff I want to see. And like you said, the nostalgia factor and everything, you know. So I yeah. definitely would have been all over this in 1991, too. Yeah, I think I would have, too. I think I would have, too. I just, I don't know. I, I don't remember watching a ton of movies. I guess I didn't go to movies by myself then, which is something that I got into a little bit later on. I'm just like, I feel like going to a movie. For a while, if I didn't have anyone to go with, I'm like, oh, I guess I can't. And now, and then at yeah. a certain point, I'm like, just go by yourself. And I started to really enjoy going to movies by myself. Sure. Especially if it's, you know, yeah, I don't think I... I don't think I ever, you know, that thing of you're a teenager or whatever. I think I would have been afraid to be seen by myself in a theater. There's like other, you know what I mean? If other kids now, it's just like, um, yeah, I, it's not like I do it. Uh, but I, I mean, I was probably well into adulthood the first time I ever went to, cause it was just like, eh, nobody wants to go to this particular movie that I want to see. I want to see it. So I'm just going to go by myself. You know, why go with people who, you want why drag somebody to something that they don't want to see and you know um so yeah but i mean i was watching a ton of movies in 1991 but you know in the theater and renting them and and all that but uh i don't like i say i was aware of this movie but i don't know why i had not uh seen it before um so i'm just going back here to what uh we were talking about seeing watching the next time because i don't remember what the name of it was while you do that i will tell okay. folks that we are chris and chris talk movies at gmail.com that's our handle we're on the socials uh we're on facebook we're on you know the socials uh, you, maybe you're watching us on youtube maybe you're listening to us in a podcast form. Either way, thank you so much for joining us. If you like and subscribe, that makes us happy. I don't know why. I don't know why that makes us happy because we don't really get anything out of this except that I do like to feel like there's actually an audience. I do. I enjoy yeah, that. Yeah, for sure. Um, and if you want to comment and let us know that we pronounced a name wrong <laughs> or that we missed something. Important. Yeah, if anybody knows how you pronounce the actor's name, I, I would love to. to um, let us know. And where did you watch? I you, I typically forget, but where did you watch this? Did you watch it on Tubi? I think I watched it on Tubi, yeah. Okay. So it's not on... I don't think there's anywhere that you can watch it ad-free, um, but it is on some, you know, some services with it, free with ads. So, um, so for the next time, we've already decided what we wanted to do, right? Remind me. Now, this was suggested to me by my brother-in-law because he quote something happened. I forget what exactly was said. And he quoted a line from the movie, from this particular movie. And I was like, I don't know what that means. And he goes, it's from Prayer of the Roller Boys. And I said, oh, right. okay, what's that? And he goes, you've <laughs> never seen Prayer of the Roller Boys? And I was like, no. Like, and, you're uh, the crazy one for not having seen Prayer I'm the crazy of one. The I guess this was one of these HBO ones back in the day that they just showed over and over. And I didn't see it, for, but he, his younger brother is into this and also a, a mutual friend of us. And he texted the friend and the friend quotes stuff from the, and I was like, wow, I've never heard of this before. So we, we usually don't do the synopsis until we get to the movie, but just to pique your interest for this, this is a 1991, and it stars Corey Haim with no, and Patricia Arquette is in this. Uh, Corey Haim, but no, it's just one Corey. There's no Corey Feldman. And the synopsis is in a dystopian near future America, a young man infiltrates a powerful drug dealing rollerblading gang that runs his town in order to end their reign for good. <laughs> and just, I mean, we watched the trailer and it, but you know, I don't know if this is going to be a unicorn that we're looking for, but it it looks really, really terrible. Why don't you watch it with us? Prayer of the Roller Boys. Now, the unfortunate thing on this is it is not streaming on any service except YouTube. Um, so somebody has, you know, illegally updated it to YouTube. So it's I, it's going to be, 
I think not a great print, but you can't even rent it on Amazon or. Oh really? Or like That's that. our yeah. only option on it. Our okay. only option is YouTube, but I just looking at it, at it on uh, my phone, it didn't look too bad. Now I don't know if you watch it on YouTube if you're t- on your TV if it's gonna I don't if know. it's gonna be pixelated we'll to and see, everything. Yeah. But, but yeah, but now but, I got to see what we're talking about here. I got to see this. Yeah. Yeah. So this is going to be a little bit of a shorter episode, but sometimes they are. Sometimes you just know what you're got to say, and you say it, and you're done. Again, two thumbs up for Eve of Destruction. I yeah, I, I think so. I highly recommend. This is for just a silly one. This is one of the most fun movies we've done for a while. It, it was it was silly, stupid, bad fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know, again, sometimes I went. I went up and I made my. I, I had to pause it. I went up and made myself a big bowl of popcorn. I was like, "This is That's definitely perfect, deserve some popcorn, man." And perfect kind of thing for you, you know, to do. One real quick thing before we go. I know you've got to go uh, here momentarily. Did you see that they have announced Beetlejuice two? No. Yes, Beetlejuice two with um Michael Keaton. It and would Tim have Burton. to be. I mean, yeah. what would be the point of redo, you know, re- yeah. resurrecting that without him? And like people have said, this isn't even like an Indiana Jones thing where people are like, you know, he's old now. And they're like, he's going to be in makeup. So he's not going to, as long as he can do the voice, he's not going to look, he'll just look the same. I'm you surprised know? that he wants um, to go back to it. They've been talking about it for years. I yeah. didn't think it would ever really happen. But they, so what they are doing now, Winona Ryder is going to be back in it. Um, and uh, Jenna Ortega um, is her daughter. Huh. Um, so that's what they're, and like I was reading some stuff on online today about it. And people were like, they're totally going to tone down the raunchiness because they're not going to have him. Uh, I mean, Jenna Ortega, I think, is like in her 20s, but she looks like a little girl, you know. Mm. So they're not going to have him like being real lewd with her and stuff. I wouldn't imagine. I don't know. Yeah, we'll we'll see what that looks like. And then the Dune 2 trailer has come out, and that's I am really, really over the moon about that. That looks I was talking to somebody the other day who didn't like uh, Denny Villeneuve's Dune, and, and I thought... I couldn't disagree with you. I mean, I understand, obviously, people are allowed to not like stuff. But uh, the things he was saying that he didn't like about it are precisely some of the things that I think make it so special. And it Mm -hmm. is definitely, of the two parts of the book, the beginning of it is mostly set up. It's a slower burn. Okay. It gets way more epic in the second half. Uh, they they stopped the first movie right before this sort of seminal turning point of the narrative. Okay. So I, I oh, that I think that's this Christmas. I think that's this holiday season that comes out. I think so. I'm very yeah. very excited. Yeah, and I mean I was because I've never read the books or anything, but when we covered it, you know, a year or so ago, well, whenever it came out, um. Yeah, I mean, it's not exactly my thing, but I, you know, I thought it was interesting, and I'll definitely watch the second, the second part. So, yes, Denny Villeneuve. Maybe they could get if I were a billionaire, I would pay Denny Villeneuve to do a remake of Eve of Destruction. <laughs> it's like my own personal. <laughs> it would be a really project. interesting movie. I bet. Yeah, <laughs> I bet he. Yeah, would, I bet he'd have a real field day with that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, All right, my friends. Um, Unless you have anything else to add. I think that's it. Thank you for joining us, everybody. And we will talk to you next week.